Hey there boys and girls, thanks for tuning in again for Flip Class. Since it is a Flip Class and it's a video that you're watching at home or in the library, make sure you've got all of their distractions. Make sure you put me out to full screen so that I get all the attention. And also remember you have the ability to pause, rewind, and do whatever you need to with normal video things. Today we're going to be learning about cellular respiration with a dark background. Cellular respiration is a process by which our body uh, breaks down sugar to make that ATP. Now before we get too far into this, it's worth mentioning that now is the time that you need to know that ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. You need to get this in your brain cycles and then commit it to memory. Adenosine triphosphate, ATP, three phosphates hanging out on an adenosine, all right? What actually happens when your body needs to do things that require energy, it actually breaks off one of those phosphates, just pops it off, and in breaking that bond, because it's a catabolic process, that's going to release energy right into the environment, right where your cell needs to use it. Then what you have left is adenosine diphosphate, that would be two phosphates on there instead of three. You can recharge the ADP back into ATP using cellular respiration, which is what the mitochondria does using sugar as a fuel. Worth noting, you can also use the fatty acid cycle, which takes a little bit longer. That's how your body actually gets energy out of fats. Fats have a large amount of energy in those carbon-carbon bonds, and we can break those down because it takes a lot longer. For more on that, take uh, anatomy and physiology. I'm sure you'll learn about it. Here's a little animation for you that just shows you how uh, that whole thing works with pictures. Here it is, as you can clearly see. Uh, we have the ATP, there's adenosine, there's your three phosphates, being all three phosphates, and it's charged. And then over here, when it's sleepy, it is uncharged. And when you feel sleepy, that is actually because your body has more ADP and less ATP. You need a recharge. That's what food's for. This is fun. The link to this is in the description of the video, so if you want to play with it, you can do stuff like, I'm going to eat this ice cream cone. Ah! And look, now your ATP has been recharged. What you can do is you can actually pop off that phosphate right there like I did and you saw that was used for the energy to put in for the activation energy for other reactions. Let's see that again. I'm going to eat the ice cream cone. Yum. Recharged my ATP for me. I take that. Bam. Use it to make some energy. Now I'm sleepy. That's okay because I've got more food. The cycle continues. This, boys and girls, is why you need to eat because your mitochondria needs the energy. So now that we have a good understanding of how your body uses ATP, let's look at in depth at that process of turning the ADP into ATP. It's called cellular respiration. It happens in the mitochondria. It is chemically similar to setting sugar on fire. It uses oxygen just like setting things on fire does. However, it's catalyzed by several enzymes, so you don't need all the energy of fire to burn that sugar. Without these enzymes, uh, the badness would set in. One of the major enzymes in play here is ATP synthase. You do need to know this one. All right? Remember, ACE is a word that means enzyme at the end, so you remember it's ATP synthesizing enzyme. Literally, this is the one that makes the ATP for you. Later on, if you take a college course, you'd need to know all the enzymes in the pathway, but since it's high school biology, you just need the one. The chemical formula, which you also need to have memorized, it goes like this. You have sugar, that's C6H12O6, that's glucose, blood sugar. It also takes some oxygen, and together that is going to make carbon dioxide and water, and... ATP. Keep in mind that because it is a catalyzed reaction, you would need to write the name of the enzyme on there, which would be ATP. Synthase. So the question is, what kind of reaction is it? It's exergonic because we're releasing energy. We capture that energy, see so it's a breaking down reaction. And it's going to be under the umbrella of catabolism because you've got the sugar and you're breaking more bonds than you're making. Therefore, energy is released and then we capture it very quickly to make ATP. That's essentially what's going on. It's all about Using the energy, we put it into this molecule of ATP, and then we can carry it around wherever it needs to be used in the cell and use it. It's a good thing. There are three steps of cellular respiration. 
Step the first is actually called glycolysis, literally the glycol, sugar, lysis, breaking. It's sugar breaking. This actually happens in the cytosol of your cells. It's an anaerobic process. You don't need any oxygen for this. What it does is it goes in there and it breaks it into little breaky pieces and then you're left with some stuff and that stuff goes into the mitochondria. In the mitochondria there's two more steps. There's the Krebs cycle which then gets you ready for the electron transport chain also known as oxidative phosphorylation. Phosphorylation as in adding phosphates. Oxidative. As in using oxygen. This is where the ATP finally gets made. It's a three step process. The ATP gets made here in the electron transport chain by the enzyme ATP synthase. You get a little bit out of the Krebs cycle, you get a little bit out of glycolysis, but for the most part, you'll see here in the graphic, we're really going after these energy carriers. That's what feeds into the electron transport chain, and that's what allows you to get a lot of ATP out of it. You'll see in the lab, those of you that are stuck just doing anaerobic glycolysis, are not going to come up with nearly the amount of ATP as those that get to use the more complex, more robust oxidative phosphorylation, which is just a scary way of saying aerobic respiration. This is where it uses the oxygen. Glycolysis. Glycolysis is the process where we're breaking the sugar. It happens in the cytosol of your cell. That means that you don't even need mitochondria for this to happen. It's a very uh, basic process, but it's good. All right, bacteria can also do this, anaerobic bacteria, ones that can't use oxygen, they'll actually use this. What it does is it breaks the six carbon sugar, it breaks them into two three carbon sugar type things called pyruvate. Right, pyruvate. That is actually a very harmful, very toxic, acidic byproduct. It's bad. Your body needs to be able to deal with it. No oxygen is used here. Two ATP are used to get enough energy for the activation energy to make that reaction happen. Here they are, the two ATP. You can see that there's the two ATP. They get turned into ADP, which means energy was released. That gives you the power to start the reaction. As a result, you end up charging up four ATP, as you can see on either side here. We've got, here's two ADP turning into two ATP. Other side, same thing, happening right there. That is anaerobic respiration, a.k.a. glycolysis. You take the sugar, it's a nice ring, you break it, you got two, three carbon pyruvates left over. You get a net gain of two ATP out of that. It's pretty good. For every two ATP you spend, you get four out of it. That's not too shabby. The dealio is, though, it's not good enough. Without the oxygen, aerobic respiration can't happen. Without aerobic respiration, you're not going to get enough ATP. On top of that, you've got that nasty pyruvate, and it must be dealt with. So your body uses a process called fermentation. Bacteria do this as well. It makes alcohol. Now, alcohol, on top of uh, being a terrible toxin, also affects your brain chemistry in very bad ways. So if your cells were making alcohol as a result of anaerobic respiration, well, then you would be in very big trouble. So instead, we use lactic acid and carbon dioxide as our reducing agents. This is what gets made. They take the pyruvate, which will kill you, turn it into lactic acid and CO2, both of which will kill you. CO2 is pretty easy to unload. You see all the CO2 I just unloaded? Lactic acid is the stuff that makes your muscles sore. If you've been doing a lot of really hard work, your body is going too fast to be able to activate the mitochondria. So instead, you build up lactic acid, which you have to work out. You can actually die from that. You've got to work it out from your muscles of what makes you feel really sore and awful the next day. So then we take uh, the pyruvate, if there's no oxygen, we're going to make nastiness. If there is oxygen, then it goes right over to the mitochondria because the mitochondria has a unique ability to handle oxygen, which is actually also very harmful for you, uh, which is weird, and use that to make butt tons of ATP. So if we have oxygen, we're going on in there for aerobic respiration. We start with the Krebs cycle, which is called the citric acid cycle because it uses citric acid 
to further break down the pyruvate into smaller two and one carbon molecules. This actually happens in the matrix of the mitochondria. Over here you see a picture of mitochondria. The matrix of the mitochondria is actually like the cytosol of the mitochondria, just it's mitochondria, so we call it matrix. This produces a small amount of ATP and this is also where we get the CO2. So when we're breathing out CO2, that comes from the Krebs cycle of cellular respiration. The main purpose here is not to get the ATP. I mean, it gives you pretty much two more. Well, what it gives you is a lot of energy carrying molecules that are like ATP but better that we can use in the next phase which is the electron transport chain. It's worth mentioning no oxygen is used yet but the mitochondria doesn't want to proceed if it can't do the electron transport chain. Right? It won't even bother with the Krebs cycle unless it knows I've got oxygen for the electron transport chain next. So, here is a diagram. It shows you a uh, citric acid cycle. You can see in here comes pyruvate. Yay, pyruvate. It gets spun around the citric acid cycle, which is actually a stepwise complex metabolic process where uh, lots of chemistry happens. But as a result of the citric acid cycle, you get 6 CO2 and 2 ATP. It's a lot of waste product for just 2 more ATP. But you also get 2 NADH, 6 NADH, and 2 FADH2 over here. The N actually stands for nicotine, and it's a very cool uh, energy carrying device that basically we stick some hydrogens on so it's charged up and ready to go. These are extremely dangerous, so only the mitochondria has the power to handle them, and they need to be used right away in the electron transport chain. So let's talk electron transport chain. This is the final step where we're making the ATP. Finally, after all the preamble, we can really get some energy going here. It occurs in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Remember how we talked about the mitochondria having a double-double membrane? Here's the outer membrane. That's just, you know, the outside of the mitochondria. The inner membrane is way different. The inner membrane is where the electron transport chain takes place. It utilizes a lot of active transport. Good thing we're experts on active transport. And it uses the enzyme ATP synthase, which is actually stuck in the M, that's the inner mitochondrial membrane, by the way, which allows for the oxygen to be utilized and catch extra electrons and make us some delicious ATP. Now, I know you're scared, but don't worry. You've seen this sort of thing before. Look at this. Break it down. Phospholipid bilayer, just like before. In it, you have several transport proteins. These transport proteins, instead of running on ATP, they run on the electron acceptors that we made before, the NADH and the FADH2. What it actually does, you guys will like this, is an ion channel. What happens is the electrons are passed along the electron transport chain. And what that actually does is pull off protons. It's a proton pump. And it pumps them up here into the outside inner of the inner mitochondrial membrane. So in here is the inside the matrix. Over here is the outside. And what it does is it gives you a large accumulation of hydrogen ions which are essentially just protons. We're doing active transport to pump it up over here. And then we've got this nice facilitated diffusion channel for them to come back through. When the protons go through here, because they're ions and they have a charge, it actually spins the ATP synthase protein like a turbine in an electric generator. It spins it, which charges Every spin of it will take three ADP, stick three phosphates on you, give you three ATP per spin. That's a big deal. Because as a result of that, you end up getting a gain of 32 ATP just from the electron transport chain. Now those hydrogen ions coming back in through here need to be grabbed and it uses oxygen as the acceptor. 
So down here, sitting at the bottom like the catcher in a baseball game, is a molecule of oxygen. It can hold one, two hydrogen ions, which turns into water. There's your two byproducts from cellular respiration. CO2, made in the citric acid cycle, and water, made by ATP synthase from catching hydrogen. This is why we need oxygen. Otherwise, you're going to have these protons flying around your cells, and you guessed it, the badness would happen. That, boys and girls, is cellular respiration, racking up the ATP. Make sure that you have these steps ready, committed to memory. Bring your A game tomorrow, because we're going to do a relay race. Thanks for watching, everybody. Very nice job.